Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Dono, for, for asking me to uh, come on for this uh, AMA. I'm very excited to be here. I'm also very nervous. I think most people are if you're doing this for the first time. Um, yeah, what I'm going to talk about is my story into getting a remote job. Uh, I think I have a very different story from other people to tell. What I'm first going to do is just give a small introduction of who I am, what I've done. Uh, and then I'm diving a little bit into uh, why games actually help in order to get a remote uh, uh, job. Then I'll dive a little bit deeper in how that translated into the different roles I got that were remotely. And as last, I will dive a little bit more into my role at GameI, uh, what GameI is, uh, what we do, and uh, how we work remotely. And then it's over to, to you uh, again, Donald, for, for questions. And I like to have it as interactive as possible. And uh, yeah, let's just let's just begin. Uh, well, first of all, who am I? Uh, my, name, uh, my name is Vera Lackmaker. I'm uh, 32 years old. I live in Antwerp. I'm actually originally from the Netherlands. I often work in the Netherlands. Uh, I currently, yeah, I live with, in Antwerp with my boyfriend and our three cats. I'm a self uh, self described information geek and a remote work geek. Uh, well, you probably asked yourself, okay, well, what is an information geek? Uh, well, it it started with me uh, this finding a, a term to describe my wide range of interests. I'm very curious and I'm interested in everything. Currently, it's very focused on remote work, which I'm happy about, but it can range from quantum physics to well, game development to uh, history uh, to uh, basically everything. Uh, it, it goes in phases, but I'm, I'm just very curious about the world. Uh, so in short, it's actually the term is uh, someone who's enthusiastic, passionate, eager to learn, and above all, curious. And I think that's also kind of summarized as um, what uh, uh, good qualities of remote work as well. Uh, above all, I'm also a game nerd. I've been gaming ever since I was little, uh, mostly alone, playing lots and lots of board games and actually getting in being involved into games at a later age. I think that started in 2008, 2009 with World of Warcraft, which was late at the time. I will dive into that later. Um, also, my CV is a little bit weird. Um, it actually began in 2009 as well, when I started gaming, but also starting studying uh, history. Uh, I graduated uh, my best since 2012. Then 2013, I began my, uh, my master's uh, of global history and international relations, uh, but I didn't finish it. Uh, reasons why I didn't finish it uh, were mostly related to mental health issues and a dark period in my life that, uh, that happened uh, uh, 10 years ago. Um, I finished it last year, and the reason why I was able to finish it was because of remote work, and I will circle back on it. Um, while I was trying to finish my master's, I also was very interested in the gaming world, like, oh, okay, what is it, uh, and what can I do? Uh, I first started working as a game show journalist for, uh, for several uh, indie game websites, uh, really, really small. Those websites don't exist anymore. Uh, did some bigger the gigs, but it was all volunteer based. Uh, while I was a journalist, I also noticed that I was interested in marketing and project management, and I really wanted to, do, yeah, really wanted to build connections. Uh, so I, I started doing a little bit of this there. Uh, I uh, became a producer for Black Helga Games, which is also a volunteer producer. It's actually there that I uh, really uh, learned my remote skills. I didn't know that at, uh, at the time, but I did a little bit of yeah, project, uh, project management, community management, HR management, so really uh, everything small that I'm doing now. I, I also launched my own podcast, uh, Beta Wave Radio, uh, which was uh, about uh, indie website, uh, indie games and what they're doing. Uh, range from, from small, uh, from one-man projects to larger games. Uh, the fun thing is actually people that were on the podcast, uh, podcast back in the day are now actually quite big. My co-host was an American who lived in South Korea and we worked asynchronously because that was normal. Uh, uh, and he's now actually uh, rather, uh, rather big game narrative designer. So it's really cool to see his work across everything. Um, well, after that, 
a dire adventure. I, uh, yeah, my money was low and I really needed a new job. So I ended in customer support for a year and then I wanted not to do anything with customer support, but I like computers. So let's do something in IT. Uh, worked in IT support for two years. Uh, then I was like, okay, I really love Linux. Let's work with Linux. And um, I became a Linux engineer. Uh, also service desk, but uh, really focusing on Linux. And something when I was a Linux engineer didn't compute my, my brain. I love working with Linux and I still love the fact that I have technical background. It's something I still use, but I'm an idea person. I, I see connections that other people don't. And I really miss working with, uh, uh, with uh, people again. So back in 2020, uh, when uh, unfortunately my, my former employee and uh, myself came to the conclusion that this current arrangement didn't work out. I wanted to finish up my master's and I, uh, and the current CTO of game, I was like, okay, well, I need someone to be the glue of the company and really focus uh, on, on uh, developing those human connections. And uh, that's how I ended up being head of remote uh, at game. I, and uh, starting to work remotely. The fun thing is actually once you, retrospective uh, everything and look back everything that i had done up till now is something that i still use today and that story is something i really want to focus on uh, therefore i want to start with a couple of confessions uh, first of all i didn't know that i had any remote experience or skills until i came, became a head of remote it's really when i start talking with my peers, with other people who work remotely, that, oh, okay, so everything that I already learned is something I really, really, uh, really come in handy. And it's actually all derived from gaming. Uh, also, no one was really interested in my ba gaming background. Whenever I, I uh, applied for a new job in IT, okay, it was fun that, that I worked with games, but no one was interested. And now it seems that that is every topic of conversation I have about remote work. Uh, I was, I was wondering, it's like, why are people so interested in my gaming background? This is actually because uh, gaming and working in gaming and working remotely is actually quite similar. Uh, why? Well, it's actually because games teach you great skills. Uh, first of all, uh, if you play a game, it's, it allows you for improved cognitive ability. So basically, if you play a game, you have a level, if, especially if it's 3D level, you have a level and you know, okay, uh, if I come there, I'll see that and that uh, enemy. I need to uh, find a plan to, uh, to, to, to attack that enemy or complete the objective. So you know how the level works. And people, once you play a game, uh, that level will stay in your head for ages. You will never really forget it. Even if you haven't touched a game in years, you will find your way around it. I mean, I can play Vice Kitty, but I have that game I haven't touched in, in over 10, 15 years. I will be able to find my way around. Um, gaming is because you have a common objective, because you 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 uh, need to achieve your goals. It also enhances your problem uh, solving skills and use logic. I mean, you come across puzzles, enemies. Uh, 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 yeah. Um, if you if you do an MMO uh, MMO like World of Warcraft, you often are in a guild and you have to uh, complete a, a raid, for example, which is basically a big uh, big part of a level that you work with five, ten, or twenty five people to destroy a boss and kill enemies. So you know, uh, strategic planning and thinking is really imp important. Uh, if you play an FPS, uh, which is a first person shooter like Call of Duty, uh, you need to be a really sharp shooter, a shooter in, in order to kill your enemy. So your hand-eye coordination actually uh, solves as well. Um, like I said, if you uh, focusing back on World of Warcraft, if you are in a raid, you have to do multiple things. You have to attack, you have to dodge the enemy, uh, you have to uh, 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 make sure that you're in the right spot in the right place. So you have to do multiple tasks uh, at, uh, at once. So multitask ability is uh, definitely something that, that people develop automatically. Uh, because there are so many things going on in a game, uh, you may have to make fast decisions. Either go left, go right. Uh, sometimes it's a good decision, sometimes it's a bad decision. If it's bad, then you try again, you reiterate. Uh, 
gamers are actually quite social. You would think that that we're not because we're behind PC and we're playing along. Well, if you play any social games like Minecraft or indeed World of Warcraft, what I like to refer, uh, you come across gamers either fighting by typing, you know, in the guild chat or, or uh, while you're doing a dungeon or indeed voice. Uh, I, I've been I've met my best friends during voice conversations and just joining a channel at uh, at uh, your local gaming uh, uh, voice chat, either Discord or, or uh, a mumble room, and you start chatting with each other. So even though you don't think you don't know them in real life, you know them because you've spent so many hours with them. And indeed, teamwork again. So uh, there are lots and lots of research about uh, the benefits of playing games. Uh, I can talk hours about it, but I won't. Um, looking at the skills and then looking at the top remote working skills, do you actually see a little bit of a similarity? I mean, if I look at organizing and planning, uh, if I'm in World of Warcraft and organizing a raid, I have to make sure that 25 people, connect, uh, uh, 25 people communicate with each other, know what they're doing. That re requires really a lot of organization and planning skills. Technical knowledge, well, knowing the game, getting you, finding your way around uh, where to go is exactly similar. Uh, collaboration and communication, well, if I don't work together with my peers or with my, with my group, we'll die. <laughs> so I really need to do that. Uh, communication, if I don't communicate well, it will go wrong and we have to try again. So better make sure that that, that people know what they're doing, checking in, making sure that, um, uh, that, that they know what to do, uh, etc. Adaptability, well, nothing is as changeable as games. I mean, people can drop out, people decide to work. Uh, same with uh, teamwork. So it's, it's very similar. And I think that's, that's actually the basis of whatever I've done. Um, well, focusing a little bit back and in, uh, getting into games itself. Uh, I started with game journalism. Um, first of all, it's very, it's very easy to have a topic that everyone knows a little bit about. I mean, games are the glue that binds gamers together, whether you work in games or not, uh, whether you, you haven't touched it in ages, uh, asking someone about your favorite game they played as a child you will be able to come up with a conversation. So that's very easy. Um, as a game journalist, when I started out, I really was focusing on, on, on creating a network. Uh, I went to the events, I reached out on Twitter. I think Twitter is for both remote work and gaming, actually the, the, the best tool there is. I still use it a lot. Um, so just reaching out and asking questions. And that's, you know, because um, the world of gaming is not centered in one place. Uh, it, it's working with people from all over the world just felt natural and it still feels natural. Um, when I became a producer slash community manager slash HR, it was a very diverse uh, 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 project I had at uh, Black Helga Games. I led uh, 30 individuals and mainly my primary task was to make sure that people uh, were able to work and collaborate together. It meant setting up workflows and overseeing processes. Um, those workflows were all async. Why? Because uh, we couldn't do it all otherwise. I mean, I had people from, well, Sweden, uh, but also I had a, uh, a animator in Brazil and a decoder in China. Uh, it was volunteer, uh, voluntarily. So if you wanted to get something done, you you know that people uh, would do it when they had the chance. So it was really, really async. You didn't know it at the time, but it was just something that was done. Uh, the main tools we actually used were Slack and Trello. Um, Slack just for our communication. So we had the, uh, the channels like, uh, uh, well, uh, the main channel, um, channels for every uh, digital, uh, for every aspect of the team. So animation, modeling, uh, uh, programming, People could ask questions there. Uh, back when I used Slack, it was not that popular and known. So uh, basic, uh, basic uh, uh, functionalities like uh, threads, for example, were either not fully implemented there, or we didn't use them. We didn't know, <laughs> and we used Trello just because Trello is very, very tangible. So it's 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 very visible. I actually made a uh, a Trello board. Um, for this for this meeting, just to to show you how I actually would set up a Trello board, and 
what the difference is between the sync Trello board and the async. Uh, spoiler, uh, it isn't. <laughs> it's basically the same. Um, so yeah, uh, well, let me go back. Black Helga really focused, uh, yeah, helped me focus on, on uh, uh, getting the main tools, uh, getting the main tools out there. And well, then I started working in in in, in customer support and that kind of stuff, uh, which gave me the hard skills that I know. Uh, and yeah, it all in the end led to uh, being head of remote at Game Eye. Uh, well, first of all, what is Game Eye? Uh, Game Eye is a uh, uh, a way for developers to run and scale multiplayer sessions around the world. Uh, you can see it as a, uh, a server orchestration, so basically uh, a layer for your multiplayer, a layer to just make sure that uh, the player the batches are being, uh, uh, how, how would I best describe it? Um, basically, it's, it, you can see it as a server orchestrator, so really a place, of a, an API uh, that takes away the, the, the uh, bother something of, of running your sessions. Um, so, yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm turning a little bit blank, sorry for that. Um, yeah, so, um, so yeah, we run across, you were basically a server uh, orchestrator. Uh, we run across the, uh, agnostic uh, infrastructure, so we run on bare metal, uh, cloud, edge. Uh, probably if we can run it, we, we will run it. And I actually got this job because of my gaming skills. Uh, I knew the CTO because we had shared connections, uh, because I did Linux, and we just started talking. He reached out to me uh, two years ago, actually before I started working, and uh, we just had a nice chat. And it was actually once, you know, uh, my, my gaming, uh, I came to the end of, of my Linux uh, career that we came in touch again, and um, we started talking. and. Basically, that's how I got it. Uh, well, what are my re main responsibilities at Game Eye? Uh, my goal is the goal is actually to be the glue between people in the company. Um, it's yeah, my goal is to make everyone happy and healthy. So uh, I'm in charge of, of organizing social activities, organizing uh, 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 communication as well. So make sure that, that the people are up to date. Uh, making sure that the, the, the documentation is done, uh, focusing on those workflows as well. Um, also, we, we really focus on, on small rituals. So uh, if someone, for example, there is someone, it's someone's birthday, uh, I know in advance and make sure that uh, I find the best present there is for them. And during the day uh, itself, we, we I often sing, but some other College uh, sing, uh, sing as well. And uh, yeah, my goal is really to make sure that there is a sense of, uh, uh, a sense of yeah, uh, camaraderie uh, uh, community. Um, another part of my job is just to show how uh, awesome the world of remote is. And I also do a little bit of technical stuff. Uh, I need the procurement strategy, and what does that mean? Well, uh, basically, I uh, make sure that the service that uh, our infrastructure, uh, our API runs on, uh, is up to date. Is that we have enough capacity to to, uh, to run all those multiplayer sessions, and uh, to uh, make sure that everything is updated. Now, well, how do we actually work remotely at Game Eye? Uh, what we do is actually uh, we focus on, on on our main value is agnostic. So we we make sure that people uh, uh, work how they want to work and whenever they want to work. So there's a free, uh, complete freedom in, in when you want, uh, in yeah, how you work or when to work. Uh, we've, uh, we value the, the term agnostic. So it means that we don't, uh, that, that we acknowledge that everyone's different and that we, uh, that we acknowledge that, that there are different opinions and that's all okay. Uh, I mean, like someone in my team is actually uh, a very early morning person and I uh, don't see that person. I speak uh, with the person a lot, but uh, always on different times, really I think. Uh, I'm a late riser myself, so I often a little bit later during the day and work a little bit later during the night. Um, at Game Eye, we really focus on results. We, we don't focus on how many hours you make, but okay, you have this task, uh, make sure that that task is done and whenever someone needs to pick it up, that they can pick it up. Like I said, we also focus on really small rituals. So uh, every morning we uh, go to the Good Morning channel and just tell what we do. 
uh, that can be a whole story if you have a very big day or if you if you don't know what what the day will bring it's just a small story it's like okay well i'm gonna focus on this this and this uh, and i would do that and that and I will see what uh, what comes around. Um, everyone game has complete ownership of what they do. Um, the, 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 the management is really like, okay, you want to do this, then you do that. Pick up what you believe is most necessary for the company. And if it turns out that it's, it's, uh, it's uh, if it turns out that it's, uh, it was a little bit a waste of time. Well, th that happens then at least you've, you've learned something. And at Camera, we use a combination of async and synchronous words. So we, we use mainly Discord and we have a couple of channels, uh, like a focus channel, so people can really focus for the uh, uh, for deep work. We also have a channel that, that really is for like a common room that I'm often in, uh, where you can just join whenever you want to have a chat with your colleague. Uh, and if you have to go or have to uh, want to do the deep work, it's all fine. And that's basically it. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. That's brilliant, Vera. Thank you very much. Um, I might come back. We, we, I know you have a Trello to show us, so maybe yes. we'll come back to the group for any questions and then you could talk us through that. So if you want to uh, stop sharing, yes. then we can come back to the group. And I had a few things I'd love to um, to, to, to talk about because actually they're, they're really interesting. But maybe we'll go to, um, go to the group. Uh, any questions you have, you might want to just unmute or maybe stick it into the chat um because there's a because a few there's really really interesting approach of how you got into it what you learned from gaming and how you transferred those skills and that transference is the is the kind of interesting thing and actually how we think about remote work it's it's as if we've all learned these skills in the last two years or we've you know focused on them but um but it's actually something that maybe is very much relevant in different spheres so colleen if you want to just put your put your um question in the in the box there in the chat first and then we can work out what the questions are about um but maybe i'll i've started because uh i wondered your focus on results vera um obviously they have to be agreed with your team so from a management perspective would you set those targets and those goals and those uh, tasks from a strategic point of view? Uh, because I'm just curious, you said everyone has ownership of what they do. So are they, are they selecting what they want to do completely autonomously or is it related to some kind of strategy? Uh, a little bit of a mix of both. What what we mainly do, uh, especially from the technical side, we have uh, I have every week I have a one on one with my uh, CTO, which is mainly five minutes. Uh, basically, just a check in. Okay, uh, what are the things that you see that needs to be done? Okay, well, I believe that this is this. Okay, well, I think that we should focus on that, that, and that. Uh, uh, then we have a small priority list, and that's basically uh, all I do. And based on that, it's it's. Uh, it's it. I focus on my main task, and whatever pops up uh, pops up, and I make and I make sure that uh, uh, this handled as well. If if I get a customer inquiry regarding Linux, uh, uh, you know, regarding a Linux question or actually regarding procurement, I make I plan that during my day. Uh, every morning, I I have these bigger goals that I discuss with my CTO, and then uh, I break them up in smaller tasks, and uh, I just work them uh, through the day and. Uh, make sure that I always have a little bit of time planned for just a couple of questions whenever they uh, they arise. And is it something that when you are setting your time, do you literally block out your calendar? Like, because I know when we talk to a few people in different uh, um, different roles and different companies, they would literally block out their calendar for certain rules or have days of the week that are blocked for certain types of activities. Is there anything like that, that you would use? Uh, some of my colleagues will. Uh, my calendar, I have to, I'm quite fortunate that I don't have a lot and lots of meetings. So that's just something I'm really happy about. So I often don't have to uh, block my calendar. Uh, but if I'm really focusing on the task, uh, like I really want to install the service or I really want to focus on uh, finding presence for my colleagues, I, I just block it in my calendar or make sure that I'm really in the focusing channel and then I know that they don't uh, need to disturb me. Otherwise, I just don't have the reaction. <laughs> I just block off my notification and uh, yeah. Good stuff. Um, I know that 
there are challenges for remote workers, people who are working by themselves might feel quite isolated. Maybe they're in different countries from the rest of their teammates, different time zones. So you mentioned that you have ways and rituals and, and sort of initiatives for including people, making people feel like they belong and that they're a form a community together. Um, what are some of the challenges that you've seen and how have you tried to solve those, Vera? Yeah, well, the challenges that we've seen is uh, fragmentation in, in team spirit and fragmentation in, in results and uh, well-being as well. Uh, whenever we, we had some uh, uh, unfortunate things that happened to, to colleagues as well, and you notice that that that's, that impacted the team, uh, impacted the person uh, as well. Um, my personal task was to make sure that, well, I sent, for example, uh, made it discussable, uh, talked with person about it, uh, sent care packages, um, organized events, and I basically like to approach lots and lots of my colleagues and just checking in with them. It's like, how are you? How are you doing? Uh, but I'm, I'm really present in our, uh, I would say, common room channel, um, also because of uh, because my work is, I, I, I like to have the best of uh, people around me. Um, that also creates a little bit sense of belonging that, that people can choose to work async, but they don't have to. And uh, if they decide, okay, I want to have someone around me, I'm often there. Um, so, so that's how I create belonging by just asking how people are uh, checking in uh, and always ask them, how can I support you? And I think that's really, really important. Definitely. And that what I'm hearing and what you're saying is that you're making yourself available and that accessibility for people. Even I like that idea of the common room. And a lot of teams would use that where it's a space, often a live space on, on Zoom or, you know, it's there. You don't have to be there. But if you want to, you know, the manager or if it's a particular project, project leader is there. Um, so that's a nice thing to do. Even scheduling. We have a community clinic uh, once a fortnight where you don't have to go, but if you want to come, it's like an open door. Come in and say hello, ask any questions. So that, that tends to work. Michael had a question. Um, not everyone in our community would have tech experience here. And not everyone would be uh, sort of au fait with a lot of the languages that are used in the computer systems. So how would someone um, working in remote teams approach a company? So uh, often a lot of these remote first companies are quite technical. Not all the roles are, but the companies generally focus on these so what advice would you have uh, for someone who maybe doesn't use any of these tools or Michael said he uses Slack, Asana, Trello uh, for communication and project management, uh, say if it's a junior role in software development or product design. But yeah, what have you seen people joining uh, your company or just people that you know who are working remotely that are coming from different backgrounds, maybe don't have this experience? Yeah, uh, what I would recommend is um, if you don't have the experience yet, um, ask questions, uh, reach out to people that know them. Uh, also, uh, I think uh, a very important skill, and unfortunately enough to ha already have it because of the gaming, because of grown up with computers. I mean, I've, I've been behind my computer ever since I was 12 uh, full time. Um, is also just don't be afraid to try it out. So if you, if you want to work with, with, uh, with Trello, which I, I think is a great tool to uh, work with and get started if you want to uh, 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 if you want to uh, focus on project management, for example, I want to get it and just sign up for Trello, read a couple of guides um, or YouTube videos that's really, really accessible and just experiment. That's actually the most important part. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, uh, and just, yeah, just try it out. That's that's the only thing that I can say. I mean, my, my mother-in-law, for example, isn't that, uh, that really skilled in, in uh, technology and I like just to sit with her and just go through all the loop of, through everything and make sure that 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 I click with her uh, on the iPad, for example. Uh, and then then having a customer a background the customer support is very handy because you can you put your place yourself very in it. But uh, yeah, find someone. I mean, I'm always happy to if 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 you don't have it, I'm always happy to just spend an hour of my time and and explaining it to you, for example. Uh, that's what I really like about 
both the indie community and the remote work community, we are all so focused on sharing knowledge together. And I think that's great. I think that that's, that's uh, you learn, we're all here to learn from each other. We're not, uh, we know that we're, we might be competition, you know, if, 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 uh, if you have, for example, you work at a uh, communication platform, uh, you talk with someone else, you might be a, co uh, a competition of each other, but we work with the same goal. And I think that's, that's really, really beautiful about the remote work community in general. That's, that's a really nice point, actually. And I love your, your sort of focus on experimentation. And that's something really important, I think, when you're working remotely, especially when you don't have people literally sitting next to you on either side to turn to with a question and actually experimenting and, and maybe that mindset of, OK, if I don't get this, it's OK, I'll come back and I'll try it again, but also reaching out. And I love that. Um, I really do find that in, in the remote work community, people are very willing to share and actually uh, Michael, but anyone else who's watching, anyone else on this call here, I think using um, the Slack to just ask questions. If you see someone posting about something, just reply and say, you know, could you give me a little bit more information about this or send me a blog that might be useful or a YouTube video? Who do you recommend? What should I do to learn more about Slack, about Trello? And actually, while we have you, Vera, it'll be amazing if you maybe shared your screen and talked us through the Trello for the next few minutes. I yeah. think that will be a really good use of time. So um, share your screen there and we'll... Uh, We'll keep an eye on the chat if anyone has any questions, but in the meantime, it'd be great to, to see what your, yeah. your process is. So um, when I started, uh, especially um, mainly when I became a producer for Black Hawker Games, uh, people were just doing work. Uh, and uh, in every job I've done since is just make a small board that's really, really tangible uh, in order to work. So this is basically a little bit of a combination of uh, uh, learnings, diving into actually Trello uh, uh, handbooks as well. So um, basically every project that I always start in is basically just a to-do list and then progress and complete it. That's every task I start is always just whether it's Notion or Trello. Um, first of all, um, in every uh, workflow, you need to know uh, where to find your information. So uh, on the left-hand side, I've, I've then you want to start working uh, async, you just start here. Best practices. I didn't have the time to fully work it out, but I uh, I will uh, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, for this board, I wanted, I had the imaginary ideas like, okay, the project, if this was a project management board, uh, what would be the goal? Why would we create this board and what's necessary stuff? So I made here a little bit of a project goal so okay the project goal is to create an async workflow for pro remote well an async workflow is, in my opinion exactly the same as any other kind of workflow the only difference is the pacing the communication tools and especially the mindset so what i've done okay so this is the project though uh first of all asking myself a couple of questions like why do we need to design this board uh what kind of resources will we use how do we design the cards how do we approve it creating etc uh, then I started a little brainstorming session with myself. So I have here uh, two accounts, Remote Work Geek, uh, who is the, 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 the overviewer of the project, and Vera Lakmaker myself, who will do the work, you know? Uh, so decided, okay, well, the goal will be this and this. So uh, we want to create a couple of cards. So the question is like, okay, how should, how should those cards look? Uh, now, it needs to be so, uh, uh, so clear as possible. So I uh, uh, created that. Uh, so um, now then someone asked the questions like I asked myself the question okay well if I do only prep doing it done what happens if I can't move further if I work on a project so well maybe it's good to add a card called blocking so that, that people know that if there is a card there uh, that that it might be easier to address that at first so that someone else can work on it as well uh, and well if you only have doing prep and complete there's no quality control so maybe we should make a place in our uh, uh, thought process for that as well. All right, so that was my training story session. So I added uh, in review and blocked. Okay, then I came with, okay, um, doing research uh, here, doing research. Okay, so I want to uh, do research about how to work async. That's great, but I'm stuck because research is a huge, huge, huge 
thing, you know. Um, what do we actually want? Well, we want to understand what asynchronization communication is, how to set it up, and tips and tricks. Okay, so that's great. So I made a couple of new cards with indeed uh, research. Um, what is async uh, synchronous uh, communication? Uh, uh, where's my other? Uh, how to set up a Trello board, and then uh, tips and tricks and documenting all my learnings, and indeed create the, uh, the presentation. So, well, doing research about asynchronization. You, know, you do your research, you add your your links, and mostly normally with way more uh, 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 context than this. Uh, okay, well. Great, I've done research on the async. If I'm doing that, I will move it here. Uh, I didn't have anything to block myself. So it's in review, I've looked at it and it's completed. Same with the cards. Um, how to set up a Trello board, same system. Okay, I had it, uh, you know, I had a prep. Then I moved it to the do, did my uh, my research uh, on Trello board, uh, made a new, uh, uh, new task. Namely, create the cards because that's really what Trello is all about. Okay, so cool, done it. Nothing stopped me in the way. I don't need to review it. Exactly the same process all the time. Oh wait. <laughs> so uh, tips and tricks. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it's just very tangible. Every step, reiterating. If you come up across a problem, make sure that that's documented as well. And what I like about uh, Trello, for example, as a project management tool, is that you can just have the activity we have lots and lots of power up so you can actually you know uh, uh combine it with a board set or i believe there is even slack integration that's for example if you uh, have a card and you type in it and send that it will automatically be uh, updated into for example a project uh, update slack channel so that's basically it it's, it's it's not nothing more than that it's just start working and and start to reiterate it and now i lost my thing that's brilliant. Yeah, you can uh, click on share or whatever and we'll come back. There we go. Yeah, uh, that's I find that really useful. And actually just to show, you know, that that sort of physical drag function, I think it's amazing that you have you start with a to do list right in every you know way in every aspect of your life to do list. Boom, boom, boom. And to identify that you have your um, what was it like completed in progress blockers, which is a really, really important one. Is there a blocker identifying what it is? And you can literally drag it across. I think that's a brilliant function. And yeah, like you said, very tangible, very visible. And I think it's a really good, it, it seems like it's quite user friendly, Vera. So yeah. I'd say for everyone watching this, uh, setting up a Trello account is free and you just get involved you start with you know something uh, maybe if you don't want to take a big risk on like a big professional project you could just do something in your personal life you want to maybe um you know just try it out it's uh, something that you can take a few moments uh, take a, an evening or a weekend or a bit of time over lunch and just get used to and then bring it into your other projects i think it's a really really good thing what I really like about Trello as well is they have lots and lots of template boards and because they are a remote first um, company as well, they also have created Trello boards just for project management. That is still a little bit from, uh, they have, for example, Meeting Hub uh, that you can, uh, so they have really lots and lots of templates. If you want me to show it, I'm, I'm happy to do that as well. It's just two clicks away. Um, just so people have an idea. I don't know if, if there is any interest for it. It's just great to just click around and, and they have great resources. And I think if, if you want to start in project management or start working asynchronously, that it's a very easy to easy to get into too. Yeah. Well, actually, you mentioned earlier, Vera, uh, we're coming up to the to the end now, but you did say that you might be available to people. So yeah. um, if you would put your uh, contact or whatever, it, maybe it's your website. I'm not sure what you prefer uh, in the in the chat. I think it's actually, uh, I'll, you can reach me at uh, indeed uh, vera at remoteworkgeek.com, uh, but I'll make sure that I'll join the Slack as well. Brilliant. So it's vera at remoteworkgeek.com. Yes. There we go. Thank you, Vera. Brilliant. And then you'll be in the Slack as well. So anybody watching this can uh, join the Slack, can tag Vera. It'll be really uh, easy to find her. And any questions about anything that's in this, um, I'm sure yourself, Vera, but also the, the community at 
at large you'd be able to jump in and talk about Trello and different project management tools. Um, but yeah, this has been really useful and, and just getting that little very, very short demo can actually change people's mindsets about, oh, I didn't know it worked that way or, oh, I didn't know you could do that. So I think that's that's really, um, really useful. So if there's any other questions, uh, feel free to, to grab Vera and I while you have her or anyone want to finish with a, a comment or Michael, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Great to have you. Yeah, likewise. Um, are there any jobs going at your company, Vera? Yeah, we currently have an opening for a technical support engineer. Technical support engineer. Yes. And what's the best way? Where where should people find this role through the Gamai website? Uh, you can find it through LinkedIn. I think it's still up there. We do have a couple of great candidates already, so I I, I hope that the, that the, that apply. And otherwise, you can just reach out to me, and I'm happy to share the details as well. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, Vera. Really appreciate that. Thanks for joining everyone. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll close it there, and we'll. It'd be brilliant, Vera, if you can keep in touch with, with anybody via the email. And again, we'll see you in Slack very soon. Definitely. And yeah, thank you so much again. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. We'll, um, we'll, we'll leave it there. We'll let everybody get back to their dinner. And uh, we'll, we'll chat these very soon. The, the, the forthcoming events will be advertised on Slack. They'll be on our Facebook group and they'll be on our socials as well. So keep an eye out and uh, you can register via Zoom again, like, like this evening. So thanks, everybody. See you guys. Bye. Bye. See you, Vera.